you can uh, oh yeah problem is if you are um, projecting then uh, when i tell you to move to the next one yeah. you okay. yeah yeah first you try if it goes on then it's fine okay so let's try both whichever works okay. Okay. okay so i'll start the webinar now and let people in we can be still for like a couple of minutes and then we we'll start okay Right. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today's um, in the Women in Science lecture series, we have Professor uh, Maitali Ramaswamy. The Women in Science lecture series is part of the talks that we've organized, uh, wherein we invite women scientists to talk about their research, uh, their life journey, and their ideas to bring more equality, diversity, and inclusivity to science. Uh, Professor Methali Ramaswamy uh, is a celebrated mathematician who specializes in the functional analysis and controllability of partial differential equations. She is a professor at Tata Institute of Fundamental Research's Center for Applicable Mathematics in Bangalore. She uh, earned her doctorate from Perry and Marie Curie University in Paris, wherein she worked with uh, 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 Henry the Zeski on the symmetry paradigm in elliptical problems in mathematics. She's a fellow of Indian Academy of Sciences. She has done breakthrough work uh, on uh, the semilinear uh, elliptic problems, the hardy sobole problems as well. I would now like to invite Professor Ramaswamy for a talk. Thank you. Thank you, Pranav, and um, thank you for your kind introduction. So let me start sharing uh, my screen if it works. Uh, yes. Uh, can you see the screen? Yes. Yes. Let me. Ah, okay. Now, may I made it full screen? Yes. So, okay. So we. Uh, shall we start? Yes, ma'am, please. Yeah. So I wanted to talk uh, about the women in mathematics in particular, of course, about it applies to women in science, uh, the rising tide. Uh, what I want to say is over the past 50 years from the beginning of my time and to now, there is surely an improvement, whatever, however small it is. So that's what I wanted to bring in. Okay, so how do I, it's not moving. You have to, I think scroll down works uh, in this. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's going, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, thank you. 
so i organized it in this way in my introduction i wanted to stress uh, the importance of having women in science and uh, also um the indo french collaboration in particular in mathematics i want to recall a little bit and then in my life uh, looking back upstream what happened in the past how i was initiated into mathematics and my french connections and uh, and then a little bit of uh, the scientific research team and then i end by talking a little bit about uh, looking forward uh, to the future what uh, we are uh, what we could do what we what is happening etc so let me start with uh, this um, so why do women matter in science it's uh, it's of course uh, we it's a trivial question we do understand women do matter first of all diversity diversity is a very important factor not only in science but in any field and uh, that uh, so women bring different skills to the table and this addition is surely a winning combination and we have several examples and uh, the earlier speakers also have given you how uh, such uh, successful combinations worked and uh, what i want to stress here is women can carry out in depth scientific research uh, they can excel in scientific administration and they can also mentor younger colleagues and they can build active research groups and many more so it is uh, important to have uh, more and more women uh, take up all these activities so it's first of all we won't be wasting half of the world's population because we will be using all the talents available and there are many more reason but uh, in my view the most important is this will ensure that the upcoming women researchers find a level playing field and they don't decide to quit science at the first obstacle they encounter because the the young women researchers when they enter the research field it could be very intimidating because uh, there are not many women around so that could be a challenge and uh, so naturally when there are obstacles they would like to take the soft option of leaving science now this is the leaky pipe you must have heard uh, several times and this is very important to plug the leaky pipe and this and we should have many role models and uh, so i hope more and more women uh, take up all these things so i also want to touch upon in the introduction about indo french collaboration which has been going on for quite a few decades uh some of the prime examples from my knowledge in uh, mathematics uh, i can uh, mention cefipra santra uh yeah the indian name is uh, uh what is the ifcpar indo french center for promotion of uh, um advanced research so centre etude francais franco indien uh, pour uh, research avancée and ficus uh, these were uh, earlier programs ifim and ifcam currently it is still uh, alive so these are some of the collaborative efforts between french government and indian government and uh, it they all worked very well to uh for the progress of mathematics in uh, both the countries and we built a lot of collaborations which i'm happy about another important one is uh, ta for iac joint program in applications of mathematics this was started in the 70s and this is an important example of indo french collaboration and it was uh, initiated by jacques louis lions uh, from the french side who was a well known uh, father figure in the french applied math community and uh, kg ramanathan who was then the dean of uh, tfr uh, uh, mumbai so they actively planned uh, the activities of this uh, center and of course they were very much uh, helped in the whole process of setting it up by Satish Dhawan who was the then director of uh, IASC in Bangalore and so this program came up in Bangalore 
and uh, i started here and my whole career has been in this uh, application that's why i want to stress uh, this uh, how it uh, developed many french professors visited here for iisc bangalore to give advanced mathematics courses of course these were not the first ones it started uh, they started visiting uh, even ta for mumbai so that was uh, laurent schwartz and many others had already uh, been in touch with the bombay school and then so it was natural to start an analysis school focused on pde and analysis in bangalore and many of these uh, courses uh, by the visiting professors in visiting french professors that uh, they were published in ta for lecture note series and uh, i'm happy to say they form an important collection of material for applied mathematics training in india okay so let me look at uh, a little bit about the flow of my life so my early fascination with uh, mathematics uh, is thanks to excellent te teachers in high school and in bsc and msc and of course the teachers are um, i'm really grateful to them for initiating me into mathematics and their encouragement and support uh, helped me to continue in mathematics and the again very important uh, support uh, came from my family my family has been my constant source of support throughout my career and uh, after the my uh, finishing msc in uh, bsc msc in bombay university i joined the tfiac joint uh, mathematics program in iisc bangalore that was focused in analysis and pdes uh, this was around in the late 70s i joined and analysis was uh, my favorite topic and so i was happy to be part of this program and then it so happened that i got the fellowship of inria in uh, paris for phd in university of paris in the early 80s at that time because of the indo uh, the french collaboration many of my seniors also went to paris and they finished their uh, phd and came back so it was the procedure at that time so i could reach uh, i could follow up with that and went for phd in paris that was the most important period because france at that time had uh, many more uh, women uh, mathematicians at all levels there were uh, fresh students and middle level researchers and even professors and that made a very strong impression in my mind and they were uh, role models for uh, me to continue and i made lot of friends at that time both male and female mathematicians in the french community and uh, i still continue having uh, collaborations and uh, they are they still remain my friends and uh, so then after the phd i came back to tf for center bangalore in the mid 80s and to continue research and teaching so that was the early period and uh, now let me come to my indo french connections so i have to thank this is my sincere thanks to my earlier indo french project collaborators more or less all my projects uh, all my career uh, rested on this indo french project mainly because the subject analysis and pd was in the nascent stage in india that was the purpose of setting up this uh, into this uh, tfr iac joint uh, mathematics program so i didn't have many collaborators in uh, india and so it was very helpful to go for this uh, joint collaborative projects so the early uh, my uh, colleague had a project in which i joined naturally that was on uh, elliptic equations and other things so this is michel shippo from university of nancy bernard digi from university of nancy after that project got over i realized this is a a uh, very good way to continue and grow in your research so the next project was in um, i had it with maria esteban and g bar the g bar from university of tour and maria esteban from seramad pari dofin and this was in a slightly different topic and, uh, and also we included hamilton jacobi and viscosity solutions and optimal control and things like that 
so the 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 point was you can't repeat the same topic in project after project it has to be innovative and you have to change the project uh, principal uh, investigators so that uh, you have a better chance of winning the project so that helped me to evolve in my research and the career also uh, went forward and then after that i moved into evolution equations and that there i just started working with jean pierre remo in uh, imt toulouse university and that was in the topics of control and control of fluid flows because he was an expert in that and that, that was totally new to me at that time and uh, it was uh, it has been a long collaboration with the, the toulouse group which uh, really gave up a lot of students also got trained in this subject and this is what i'm currently working and after that the next project i had with silver yerbedoza from again toulouse who is now in university of bordeaux and the currently running project is with takio takahashi in indriya nansi so as you see this was uh, the way the career evolved uh, thanks to the various uh, projects and um, now I, i also have to say about the financial support my sincere thanks for the financial support that came from cefipra ifcpar uh, for supporting my joint projects over the past several years so that was uh, very crucial for my growth and also my sincere thanks to airbus corporate foundation uh, they uh, helped us to create the airbus foundation international teaching and research chair that was named mathematics of complex systems at the tfr center for applicable mathematics in bangalore actually this was jointly shared by applicable the center for applicable mathematics and another center of tfr which is icts both in bangalore so these were my indo french connections so let me go on now i want to give a little bit of uh, idea about uh, the research topic so my research topic is differential equations they come from various uh, natural processes like the melting of ice radioactive decay or heat conduction and many many other example examples they can be formulated as a mathematical model using assumptions based on experiments or observations or physical laws and uh, the motivation of course comes from we want to understand the phenomenon and we want to make prediction future predictions and we want to control by using various parameters and many more motivations these are the main ones at least what i see so one of the prime example is uh, newton and uh, newton is uh, i would say the father of applied mathematics it is laws of motion uh, these ordinary differential equations even today help us understand the motion of bodies and uh, so i added a picture although not very clear of isaac newton uh, 1643 to 1727 and um, in most models still we recall uh, newton's laws and then start so we go to the next partial differential equation models which is the, my interest so the conduction of heat and diffusion of chemicals they can be modeled by heat equation or which is a, a parabolic type equation and you all of course have the vibrations vibration of a string or vibration of a membrane or vibration of a plate or vibration of a beam all these are controlled by wave equation which is of hyperbolic type and of course we have potential flow which is uh, controlled by La laplace equation which is of elliptic type these are the most important linear equations initially uh, mostly everyone starts with the elliptic uh, the stationary elliptic equations and then uh, they go into non linear elliptic equations and then uh, if they like move on to the evolution equations Uh, but of course no general theory for non linear equations but there are many interesting non linear equations it's a zoo of uh, equations very interesting main fluid fluid models are euler's equation navier stokes equation 
and of course we have sambenon's equation the shallow water equations potwick debris and uh, benjamin bona model and there are many many other models and these have very uh, strong applications in atmospheric sciences oceanic sciences aeronautics and even blood flow today so the applications are plenty and uh, you could study theoretically numerically and uh, for control or for existence so let me explain a little bit before that let me point out who is claude louis navier 1785 to 1836 uh, in the of the famous navier stokes equation so this is uh, george stokes 1819 to 1903 the british uh, stokes flow is one of the important uh, contribution so what do we do in when we study the differential equations so the first we want to understand whether it the equation is well posed what is the meaning of well posed does there exist a solution to the equation and is the solution unique and if so does the solution vary only slightly if we vary the data slightly i mean by data what is the given right hand side uh, dynamics and what are the auxiliary conditions like initial conditions boundary conditions etc so we expect some kind of continuity between the data and the solution so if all these happen we say equation is well posed so when we start with the differential equations we have to check whether it is well posed and then we continue other studies and the regularity how smooth is it or does it blow up or does it remain positive so there are many many interesting um, uh, qualitative properties we would like to study the topic of my interest was also control aspects so can we control the trajectories of a differential equation to reach a desired profile this is very often important from applications for example if i have a room i want to maintain in a certain temperature we have to know how to control the aircraft for example to maintain the temperature inside the aircraft we would like to know how to control the 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 air so that the temperature is maintained at the correct uh, uh, point you want and can we control it in an optimal manner this will lead to optimal control problem this is very important in uh, for industrial processes because we want to cut down the costs or uh, can we characterize the optimal control because this is also important to implement it uh, if you find out what is the optimal control so can we use this control to stabilize the system if it is unstable so i want to elaborate on the last point a little bit before uh, proceeding so the stability of differential equations is an very important concept so the solutions of a system of differential equations in let's say in the euclidean space n dimensional space i have denoted by rn so we write it as uh, the derivative of z z prime t is a z t for t positive let's say and you have to give specify what happens at t equal to 0 in particular anyway if you start near the equilibrium point 0 then the trajectory or all the solutions if you don't specify the initial conditions then you have plenty of solutions so they all will tend to zero exponentially as t tends to infinity if if the eigen values of a have all negative real part see the um, the eigen values are complex numbers if the real part is negative then i can say the system is stable stable i mean all the solutions will converge to zero or they will decay but many very often it may not happen so if not we can try to add a control term to bring the trajectories to zero this may be very important in many processes so in particular in fluid flows so i am here only considering uh, ordinary differential equations but we'll move on to pdes uh, next so if i have z prime t equal to a z t we will add a control matrix b acting on a control u t for t positives this but changes the dynamics in such a way that the spectrum or the eigen values of a will all not a now for the modified uh, system 
it should have negative real part. So that is the aim. And you specify some initial condition. A is the n by n matrix and B could be a control matrix with the n by m, let's say. And it depends on the control variables. If you have m control variables, then that is the control vector which will live in the m dimensional Euclidean space. Now we have to determine the control vector for a given control matrix so that you can steer the solution to zero. This is what a process of stabilization and it will be ideal if we can find the control in a feedback form or this U depends on the solution at a given point. So that is the, the main uh, area of research these days. So let me move on to the fluid flow. Uh, the, initially, we started with compressible fluid flow, which is the Navier-Stokes system. So it's a, par a partial differential equations model for the flow of compressible fluid in an interval is uh, given by this system, system of uh, differential equations. So this is the density is rho, it depends on x, the spatial variable, t, the time. And the velocity of the fluid is given by u x t u the, uh, depends on x the spatial variable. The spatial variable x varies in zero one, and uh, the t can be t positive between zero to capital T. Let's say so the fluid evolves according to these two equations. The this is uh, the time derivative of rho d t rho plus d x rho u is zero and uh, rho u t, uh, the time derivative, I have written the partial derivative as uh, with the suffix t and the partial derivative with respect to x with the suffix x. So rho u t rho u square x plus the, the pressure p rho and the, the x derivative of that minus mu u x x is zero. These are written down again by the, the consideration using Newton's law. This is, continue, this is continuity equation and this is the momentum equation. And uh, the pressure is usually taken to be a function of the density. So A is some constant uh, depending on the fluid. A rho power gamma. So the gamma index is also fixed depending on the fluid properties. So the existence and uniqueness results are known. And the, some of the names in this uh, field is Kajikov, Smaller, Half, and others. The question uh, we wanted to study was, can we control the fluid? And uh, so that I very slightly describe uh, without going into details. So the scope of our work is somewhat like this. So what we try to do is you recall, this is a highly nonlinear equation because it involves rho u square. It's coupled, it's a bad coupling and rho power gamma and x derivative is coming and it's a system. It's not even a single equation. So the, the difficulties are multitude. So what one does is you try to linearize it. Usually the linearization is done around a steady state solution. So we try to linearize it around constant steady state so that the coefficients will all be constant and it's easier to study first. With suitable boundary conditions, we get the spectrum and the basis of eigenfunctions. And then we study interior and boundary null controllability. What it means is the control is acting in the interior of the domain, let's say zero one or it can act on the boundary either at the point zero or at the point one. And what is null controllability? That is whether, whether you can control the solution towards zero or in this case, uh, towards the steady state. So suppose I start in the neighborhood of the steady state and let it evolve, whether we can control it to go back to the steady state. So that is what in this case, null controllability and approximate controllability means you may not be exactly able to reach zero, but can you at least go to a neighborhood of zero? That is the approximate controllability. And then we studied stabilization of the linearized system. As I explained, um, we add a control term in a feedback form to make it uh, whatever the bad eigenvalues, we could push it to the uh, negative half plane and we could stabilize the linearized system. 
and then we have to come back to the nonlinear system. So using this analysis, we try to do the local stabilization of the nonlinear system. Now there are also other, so this was for the, we started with compressible Navier-Stokes, but we moved on to several other fluid models, incompressible fluids, viscoelastic fluids and periodic uh, fluids. And uh, so others like this we study. And uh, currently the latest uh, project we are studying fluid structure interaction problems. So it's very important we want the, in the fluid, there may be a structure which is also moving, like a fish moving in the water or an aeroplane moving in the, in the atmosphere. So, or you could also have the blood vessels, blood is flowing inside and the, the uh, elastic body is covering the outer thing. So we want, there is interaction between the structure and the fluid, whether the structure is inside or it is on the boundary, so there could be interaction. So we want to see how the influence of each other and how they evolve. And above all, whether can you control it? So all these are the our uh, questions we want to study. We have been studying. So let me move on. This is just for a motivation. Open channel flow is typically like this. And there are several patterns uh, observed. And uh, you assuming periodicity, we could uh, study uh, and whether it becomes turbulent and how we can control. These are all some of the questions. Okay. Okay, what next? So I want to look uh, now for towards the future. So what I was doing, uh, yeah, just in the recent past, I retired very recently in 2019 from TIFR Center for Applicable Mathematics. And now I have been associated with ICTS, uh, which is also part of TIFR. And um, I have been teaching PDE and other courses to students off and on, not regularly. One is Chennai Mathematical Institute in Chennai and uh, participating in summer schools in basic analysis and PDE for university students. And this, the, with the idea of hand-holding them so that they will apply for research institute and they will get into a higher education and continue with research, et cetera. I also participate in workshops on research topics so that it helps the early career research workers and uh, to introduce them to new topics. And of course, I enjoy continuing my scientific collaborations and uh, with other academic work like editorial work for scientific journals, paper reviews and research project review, reviews and uh, faculty recruitment and faculty evaluation, et cetera, et cetera. So it goes on. And uh, the main thing uh, the, I would like to stretch, stress here is, the Indo-French project uh, that I worked on, I told you that it shaped my career. It was not the only thing that it not only shaped my career, but it greatly helped to create a group of well-trained students pursuing research in these areas currently. And they have become faculty in various institutes. And it, I'm very happy to see the research is growing, the group is growing because these people are training new students and they are taking up projects. And so you see the continuation of the flow. So Sheetal Dharmati is now faculty in Isa Trivandrum, PV Anup faculty in IIT Madras, Shirshendra Choudhury uh, faculty in Isa Kolkata, Debayan Maiti in um, TIFR CAM faculty. Debanjana Mitra is a faculty in IIT Bombay and they all have students who are getting trained and I enjoy interacting with them. And of course, there were also other postdoctoral students elsewhere in the country and some are still abroad. And so the, the, the collaborative projects had a cascading effect, which I wanted to point out. This is also a very important uh, aspect. Okay, so what is the future? What uh, I expect from the future flow. I want uh, more and more such collaborative projects uh, to continue because they can create a strong scientific force from the younger generation. And uh, here I wanted to mention that IWM, Indian Women and Mathematics, 
because i want to mention about the awareness awareness has to be built and uh, that many things uh, many points are uh, taken up and one is i one factor is iwm indian women and mathematics this was started in 2009 it's supported by national board of higher mathematics nbhm the prime motive was to encourage more women to pursue higher education in mathematics so it uh, works on uh, organizing events networking opportunities mainly to create more awareness because as i said the leaky pipe the women leave uh, in large numbers but until uh, bsc msc i also felt i didn't know that uh, there were so few women because there was more or less it's about equal uh, male female ratio it starts uh, only in the research level you start becoming thinner and thinner and when you go up the ladder you don't find any other women that could be intimidating for young researchers while they are starting so more awareness has been created also thanks to the steps taken by women in science panels of the science academies uh, here i want to thank rohini godbole one of the the, uh, the senior member who has been uh, shaping up women in science she is instrumental in many activities of uh, organizing events and uh, thinking of books many books have come out and so that is that's also raising the awareness in uh, among the women students of course i want to point out this current series on why women matter in science it's an important step forward in this direction and there have been also many policy interventions by government bodies like dst department of science and technology serb and these also help women to continue in uh, research but these are just a few we need more and more such innovative measures and they are all needed to help the rising tide of women in mathematics and in science in general to grow more vigorously as i told you when i started it was very very less but now i see more and more women when i go to a conference it's not just one or two it's at least in double digits and uh, sometimes even 30 40 which i'm happy about that's why i end my talk here with the optimistic note of rising tide of women in mathematics so i end my talk here thank you very much thank you so much professor ramasamy it was a wonderful talk and uh, i was uh, most of the time making notes of the observations that you made uh, in mathematics uh specifically uh okay. because as i said i was particularly impressed by the kind of work that you've done on the mathematics i was just wonder before i uh, we go to uh questions on diversity um, uh and women in science i wanted to ask one quick question on the fluid structure interactions um so in the fluid if i understand it correctly uh we can actually use this um technique to understand the interior of stars if i'm not wrong because it, that's a fluid structure interaction but with different temperatures and different viscosities does that work probably i have not uh, i have not as i told you i have not uh, worked in uh, astrophysics but maybe there are models and this has to be looked into i yeah, would be happy to look into that yeah i think it's an interesting uh, thing to uh, topic i have been only in as i said in the fluid uh, yes. side um, yeah i mean because we when we treat interior stars we treat that as uh, basically with the um, uh, fluid equations exactly exactly yeah hydrodynamic equations and then when you treat the entire system you use magnetic hydrodynamics equations yeah. then the you have to take into the the effect of magnetic field and uh, yes. so that is much more complicated and uh, but i'm sure people are doing but i'm not aware of that yes, um uh, to the audience the, who were um, listening to her talking about different things i must say and i think professor ramaswamy would agree that one equation that has baffled most physicists and mathematics mathematicians and 
anybody who understands sciences is navier stokes equation and i think that has been the favorite for generations now <laughs> yeah i think that's, that's a continual joke that goes on if nothing can solve the navier stokes equation it should solve it yeah it's a it's a very fascinating puzzle because it explains everything but still we don't have we don't understand very well whether uh the well post that is uh, it is uh, is there a blow up or is it mm-hmm. the solution is regular we are not able to answer that's why the famous uh, clay mm-hmm. mathematics uh, prize has been uh, announced yes. yes um uh, so uh, i believe uh, uh, if i recollect rightly there was a national conference of women mathematicians in 2010 in hyderabad uh, before in- in Sorry. hyderabad in 2010 yes, yes in yes. hyderabad so um uh, w- uh, i was wondering if you would like to summarize uh, what uh, the conference led to eventually because that was something which fascinated most of us as students because um, i believe 2010 was the time when the gender dialogue was just coming in in sciences especially in mathematics and at that time when you see such kind of conference it was a really fascinating subject yeah the i, I don't have re- clear data how it uh, really uh, helped but uh, what was important is we brought uh, international uh, mathematician very successful women mathematicians from all the fields not only differential equations but uh, they also algebra number theory geometry and uh, it was such a interesting collection of uh, successful women uh, mathematicians and that had a real impact i could see uh, on the fresh uh, the students who were doing bsc msc at that time when i spoke to many students they all were fired up they wanted to continue into research and they were uh, that that was um, that was the effect i could perceive but we didn't continue and collect data so i'm not very sure yeah, i think that is a very, very refreshing thing to hear and i think that that is something that we would uh, need to do again and yeah. have these conferences in cycle well, i think uh, because uh, with our previous speakers we've also discussed uh the problem that is the lack of role models for girls and i think um that is something that would need to be addressed at some level uh what do you think uh, is is it getting addressed now or do you think this is still a long road yeah that what you mentioned is a very important point the role, <clears throat> role model is a very important uh, in my own personal experience i could continue because i had good role, role models and uh, when i was just starting in uh, this joint uh, program in tfi ac i was taught by kathleen morovitz one of the most successful uh, uh, women mathematician she was the director of kurant institute and uh, she was uh, teaching us and that made a very strong impression that women can, can uh, rise to such levels and mm-hmm. also when i went to paris i could see many women uh, in very high position doing so well and uh, that is important as you the next question what you asked was uh, whether it is being addressed yes we are trying to address that question so the um, at least through indian uh, women and mathematics we try to bring um, there is a visitors program so we try to bring uh, uh, women from all over the world uh, successful uh, mathematicians and we request them to visit uh, various regional uh, places universities not only the, the top universities top uh, research institute but even the other places so that the young uh, res- young um, msc bsc students or young researchers can interact with them on a one to one basis this seems to help so we have to see what is the effect after i think i think that's a that is um, a very um, interesting thing to do because 
when people are able to see that i think there are two important things that happen one there's a there's a sense of power shift that happens wherein the male peers also realize that uh, the male peer when i'm talking about peers i'm talking about students of mm. women students and also their male peers realize that there are people there are women who can actually do this because i i i think there is a, a very important thing that i uh, that is address that is there uh, that um, actually causes more trouble is the conditioning and the perception that a field like mathematics is not for women there there's a predicament when anybody who takes up mathematics when she's a girl there's always that predicament and there's always there there's a lot of peer pressure that you know you can't do it you know can't, you're not good enough and yeah. and have in in that kind of scenario you you bring a female mathematician the entire power shifts and then you know there is a growing pattern that one can actually see and i'm very happy that some kind of initiatives are there in place and i'm and and i must congratulate you for that i mean uh, we should congratulate uh, that uh, iwm indian women and mathematics it's a joint initiative by several uh, uh, women it started in 2009 uh, and uh, it has several interesting um, mm-hmm. uh, programs like this do you think um, uh, in especially in uh, subjects like mathematics uh, is there a lack of networking opportunities um uh, for women scientists because i was looking at uh, a couple of uh, papers while i was preparing for your talk uh, i actually realized that most of the women scientists there were an issue that was raised continually of lack of re- networking opportunities amongst uh, your peers in mathematics yeah yeah it's very true that uh, networking opportunities are very less uh, uh, somehow because there are not enough numbers first of all and uh, so if i try to look at in my field there are very few women and uh, they are uh, now in um, during this pandemic situation uh, somehow life has become easier because we pl- we connect more easily with zoom right we don't have to travel but mm-hmm. earlier it was not easy to travel and uh, make contacts and start collaboration so it was uh, it was a daunting uh, task for uh, women and women have their own uh, other family pressures and uh, social problems so it was not easy but we find that with the iwm we try to network and uh, there is a mentor mentee kind of relationship and so they it seems to be working so we have we hope to find more innovative ways of taking it forward so that I, is I, important i think it's a very interesting project uh, and i'm really looking forward to understanding more about it after this talk i think i'll be writing you a couple of emails now <laughs> sure. Sure. um there's another thing that i was wondering if you can address um uh, is the opportunities to return to work for women who take breaks maternal leaves mm. there's a very there's a lack of opportunities for they can actually return to work there's a lack of child care facilities and and sometimes it it can be discouraging because of that do you think that it, it is one of the issues that needs to be addressed yeah yeah that is still a very important issue uh for uh, not only for mathematics any science engineering field uh, women working women have this problem so but uh, we have been uh, campaigning for child care facilities and most institutes most iits and isers have been starting um, child care facilities so slowly it is uh, the awareness is the most important so if this issue is being addressed so it, i hope uh, it will improve as the situation may improve as we go along yeah. uh, when we were envisioning the lecture series the of which you are part right now i was actually thinking of how easy it is for men to patronize women in science and then you know work their way around it it is and it's rather um, and i mean 
for common sense you have to campaign that is something which is extremely sad i i didn't hear your first sentence can you repeat uh, i i was saying when we were envisioning the lecture series of which you are part uh-huh uh, i was actually thinking that how easy it is for men to patronize women and get their work done and get away with it i mean child care facilities is something which is common sense and you have to campaign for that and it's a saddening it's it's a sad state of affairs and yeah. i think that is the case everywhere yeah the, i i'll tell you another worst scenario when i started initially we went for uh, one conference i was the only woman but uh, the the restroom was only male restroom there was no <laughs> special restroom <laughs> good lord I mean, is, so is there a lack of common sense <laughs> no but the, that was about uh, for 30 35 years back now we have come a long way you see i think them, i think common sense still existed 35 years ago <laughs> <laughs> no because it didn't seem a necessity at that time you see then and even yeah. now what will happen is if every floor will have a men's restroom but uh, the women's restroom may be in alternate floor so <laughs> something like that <laughs> good lord so, these are not i think, uh, i think we also need to teach people common sense at some point yeah so these are <laughs> <laughs> i mean i mean it's 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 such i mean i find it a very dark humor because it is sad state of affairs it's yeah. just pathetic yeah that is true that is very it's, it's 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 yeah but i mean i mean then there's another question that i uh, i think is important to address what about opportunities to return to work uh, once you have a career break because of yeah. lot of pressures that are put on you as well yeah this is a very important point and uh, we don't know we, we the many policy decisions uh, have helped actually mm. uh, if i remember right there are projects specially designed for women who have taken a career break and uh, they can apply so i have seen uh, some uh, women trying the, but it's not easy to come back even with this project it's mm. not easy for them to come back into the active uh, research work because when you took a break the research has progressed so much and you have to catch up so much and then continue it's not a easy job but we are still thinking, we are whatever we help we can uh, try to come about we are still uh, battling this but of course as i said there are special fellowship uh, for uh, such women and uh, there are also um, i remember right uh, they are given the project is extended that is if mm. you had to take a break and then the project can be uh, given after 6 months or so so it doesn't end because you have uh, taken a break so there are some that is that is good that point. is good that is good yes yeah. um uh, one uh, question that uh, also i think helps a lot of uh, students who are listening to us and uh, to the parents who are listening to us is if if a child wants to start a career in mathematics how one should go about it ah uh, yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is a, this is very interesting question because i don't know see mathematics or even science for that matter is um, it's uh, it's like a game you like it then you are so attracted to it and then you plunge into it mm. but sometimes it is not uh, so uh, probably uh, parents can initiate by creating some interest through puzzles or through simple books or very interesting um, talks or people actually meeting in person is a very important thing and there is always nothing to replace a good teacher you need a true. very good teacher who will uh, inspire you because if somebody can intimidate you then everything you just shut up and then you don't want to see you see many people they say i don't like mathematics i hate mathematics because that uh, fear has uh, come in 
so we want to avoid that kind of fear the teachers mm. must be more encouraging and uh, they should um, see, uh, help the students to see how interesting it can be it's like a game if you know the rules you can play the game yes i think you're right if you know the rules you can play with the rules <laughs> that is so true i mean that is exactly what mathematics is you just have to know the rules exactly yeah yeah i and you're right you're right absolutely if you have good teachers i think mathematics can be fun yes absolutely absolutely when i went to army school ma'am and uh, both great mathematics teachers that i had were women i had in uh, in my primary we had uh, mrs uh, surja and then uh, we had uh, mrs rosaline nv she used to be wonderful mathematics teachers and uh, if if it were given chance then i think most of the students who were in different sections would come and actually attend their classes they were wonderful mathematics teachers See? you see even in the the elementary school high school that is where your uh, interest gets shaped and there yes. the teachers must be very good very motivating and inspiring very dedicated very dedicated, very dedicated. and i think uh, that is where one intervention should be taken where and we need to right. ensure that our teachers are good who go to our schools not the other way around where and when a student comes to you in 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 a university and then you're trying to you know brush him up for the things that he she she should learn in school um, yeah I, is, i agree i completely agree with you uh and i think i have one uh, last question for uh, on from the behalf of my female colleagues is as an early career researcher one goes through lots of issues with the social placement of mathematics right as a mathematician and as a female mathematician there are some tags that are put on you and then you want to get into a particular role and then there are peer pressures and there are a lot of pressures and i i believe you would know better than i do how were you able to overcome that and what would you suggest to our female peers uh, to actually do if uh, i'm not sure i fully understand the, the question is it about uh, the so the i'm i'm saying that when you are an early career researcher female uh -huh. and there are a lot of unusual unnecessary pressures that are there second then there is a unnecessary bias against you because you are a female researcher then how to actually overcome that and if if those kind of hurdles were faced by you oh, how yeah. did you do that yeah so from my experience i can uh, say uh, unfortunately i was uh, the only uh, female uh, faculty in the department for a very long time and uh, mm. that was putting a pressure sometimes i really needed to connect with uh, others or to find uh, collaborations and so what i did was uh, i tried to reach out to other uh, scientists not necessarily from mathematics because i couldn't find many and uh, sometimes physics sometimes chemistry so biology and so i used to have my own network because they have also similar problems they also face and so we used to exchange notes did you feel like this did you feel how should we handle so that helped me that kind of you don't have to have another mathematician but uh, they these people have uh, similar problems like i face but they maybe they faced in their lab or they faced somewhere else and so we used to discuss these things and then uh, we used to i used to reflect and evolve my strategies so the the approach i followed was uh, try to ignore and just keep on doing and uh, your work and uh, keep uh, continuing and uh, then slowly everything gets back to normal unless you have a very very bad uh, uh, bias against you in some place that can also happen that in that case it could be very very what to say very depressing or draining your energy so it, 
it could be a challenge i agree uh, but in general um, trying to keep up a good relation and not interfering with anyone and continuing my work and helping others uh, allowed me to continue my way and of course a collaborative project so i could take a fresh breath whenever i went out and uh, that gave me the oxygen i needed <laughs> Well, that is um, that, thank you so much ma'am for making those observations and i think there are there's a lot to learn and i think especially for men there are a lot of takeaways from your talk uh, especially from the interaction uh, on this note uh, i would like to thank professor mathali ramaswamy for her valuable time and interacting with us it was a wonderful talk and a great discussion i very much enjoyed it and i'm sure our viewers must have really cherished the time that they watched you and i'm sure that they are going to come back to this talk again and again thank you so much thank you thank you pranam thank you for your kind uh, compliments yeah so yeah so we close now yes ma'am yes thank okay. you thank you bye bye